Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and today we've been asked to simplify each of the following expressions. I'll just remind you that simplify is a really generic word that basically means perform the indicated operations, at least as much as you can. So in this case, there, uh, what is the indicated operation? Well, I see that this three is shoved up against uh, this X and the only thing between them is a parentheses. Uh, anytime you see uh, that, uh, where the only two thing, the only thing between uh, two numbers, and remember a variable, a letter is just some unknown number. So X is some number that is, hasn't been named. Um, but anyway, anytime you have parentheses between two numbers, it's telling you to multiply. So this says three times X times five. Now this is a super simple example. If you already know how to do this, go ahead and you can start looking at the questions of the day that go beyond this. But I just wanted to start with this simple example so that students can see that multiplying in algebra isn't as hard as we'd think. So two things I wanna point out to you. One is um, what's known as the associative property. Um, you don't have to know this name, but it's the idea that uh, the grouping won't matter when multiplying uh, numbers. Let me show you what I mean. Let me start with numbers that don't have X's in them, huh? Let's try like a two times three times four. Okay, uh, what I'd like to say is, even though this is written with the two first and then the three and then the four, it won't really matter how I group these numbers together to multiply them. For example, I could multiply the two and the three together first, giving me six, and then multiply by four, I'd get 24. Uh, but I could have started another way. I could have started by multiplying the three times four. Three times four, of course, is 12. And if I do 12 times that original two, I'll get a 24. Or I could have been totally out of order and then the end two numbers first. Two times four is eight, and if I multiply that by the remaining three, I'll get 24. So I hope I adequ adequately proved the associative property to you that the grouping won't matter when I multiply. Like what I do first uh, won't matter, okay? And so um, since that's the case, we're gonna use that property here to multiply in the order we want. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply together the three and the five first. I know what three times five is, uh, it's 15. Now you might say, but Kate, what do I do with that X, that unknown X? I don't even know what he's equal to. Um, should I figure out what he's equal to? Okay, guys. <laughs> Y'all need to stop with this compulsion to always figure out what X is equal to. I can't figure it out in expression. All I can do is say, I want to multiply together 15 and X. And the way we do that in math is we just write the, the number first, the letter second, we just shove them real tight together. What is 15 times X? Well, it's 15 X's. <laughs> whatever X is equal to, I don't know what he's equal to, but whatever he's equal to, there's 15 of him. And so you just write 15 X. That literally means 15 times X. And so I'm done. And so what I wanted to point out to you here, another nice little rule, it won't matter here what order these numbers are written in. Notice that I have three, five, and X again. Again, I can multiply in any order I want. So three times five is 15. And to multiply that 15 by X, I just shove the X on the back side. Same thing will happen here. Five times three is 15. And to multiply by this remaining X, I'll just shove the X on the back side. So regardless of what order I write these things in, uh, I'm still going to get 15x, and that, by the way, also has a name. It's known as the commutative property. But whether you know the name of the property or not, realize uh, that you can group how you want, you can change the order how you want in multiplication, you're still going to get to the same place. I got to 15x in each of these. Now you might say, I'm not done yet, I don't know what x is. Again, you cannot figure out what x is here. This is as simplified as any of these expressions are going to get. The final answer for each one of these is 15x. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.